enough for us both. Let it be our care not to make ourselves too little for it. Claire Hunt. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. Very grateful for this opportunity to take part in the debate to celebrate uh, the contribution of the Irish in Britain and the very uh, deep bonds of friendship and neighbourliness between our uh, two islands. Uh, I'm not going to remind uh, the members of, of, of the other quote that I remember from Edmund Burke when he said that uh, for most English people their ambition about Ireland was to hear no more about it. Uh, and I'm, I thank all the members who are participating um, today for having a much uh, wider ambition. It's a pleasure to, to follow members from across the House who have done so much to honour and deepen the contribution uh, of, of the Irish to the fabric of Britain, and in particular um, to, to the member for Rochdale for bringing forward this debate and others who have spoken, and in particular the member for St Helens, who, who, who played such a key role um, in events yesterday, and is, who, who has exemplified and represented the Irish in Britain for, for many years with inclusivity and practicality uh, and confidence and wit, lots of wit and stories, and, and we're very, very proud of him for it. Um, of course, it wasn't always an easy landing for, for Irish people in Britain. We know that, that many uh, did face discrimination and isolation, but Britain, uh, and in England in particular, provided uh, refuge and acceptance and opportunities um, for people who, in many cases, uh, Ireland had rejected. And because maybe they were pregnant, because they were gay, uh, because they were different in some way, or because um, there wasn't work for them, Ireland, to our great shame, now pushed out many unwanted people um, to England. And, and in fact, here they found acceptance and solace and opportunity and for that we're very very thankful uh, indeed uh, Irish, Irish people and their descendants have, haven't only found a, a good home in Britain, they've helped to make it a good home for other people as well. And the work of Irish people across all classes of work, all skills and vocations and talents and enterprise and creativity uh, and service is rightly uh, a source of pride from, from roads and building in decades past to the very top uh, of industry and, and the creative sectors today and throughout many uh, decades and very much during um, COVID's curtailment um, within the National Health service and it was lovely to see that um, represented and, and celebrated in the parade at the weekend. Uh, and because um, of that of that contribution and, and mutual support, I've no doubt that the Irish centres uh, and networks in Britain will be stepping forward to offer um, support and service and space to Ukrainian refugees in, in, in their time of need. And while the common travel area privileges the Irish in Britain and the British uh, in Irish as, as in Ireland as befits um, our, our close neighbourly relationship. The Irish uh, stand in solidarity with people from across the world um, who've had to leave their home because their home uh, wasn't safe or because they couldn't make a life there. And, and we know how it feels to, at times, to be uh, cast as a, as a suspect community and be uh, to the bottom of the pile. And I think um, that, is, that experience is reflected in, in the internationalism of, of, of the Irish community uh, and the support that they offer to, to migrants and minorities from, from elsewhere. Um, the deep integration of, of Irish people in this island uh, hasn't actually come at the expense of, of pursuing distinctive Irish sports and traditions and arts, which, arts which as others um, have mentioned, are, are flourishing. Uh, indeed, I think in many parts, um, British TV presenters and, and journalists frequently actually claim some of the, uh, the Irish people, and the only surprise is that our current Home Secretary hasn't spotted citizenship being uh, conferred onto people and, and come down on it like a house of bricks. Um, Fos the Shawshok na Gaelga, Koshi the Enav, Imak the Arfod and Cheer, August uh, Arfod and Dhoni, Hogan, Fali then Coulter, Janga, August Adriat, uh, na Heron a Kalaru. Indeed, what better opportunity than this to celebrate uh, Shock na Gaelga taking place uh, right now? It's Irish Language Week, and that's an opportunity um, to celebrate uh, uh, across the, the island and across the world uh, Irish culture uh, and language. Um, the Irish people in, in, in Britain are a strong uh, thread in, in British-Irish uh, relationships, an absolutely uh, critical part of, of the ethos and the architecture um, of the Good Friday Agreement. And John Hume and, and the SDLP um, to this day have always seen those, those three strands of, of the agreement as, as interdependent and indivisible and mutually uh, reinforcing and cherishing and nurturing uh, the strand three relationship. It's, it's very core to the role of SDLP uh, MPs taking up our, our mandated place um, in this house and that's something uh, we take we take very very seriously and, and as others have said the conflict um, that's playing out at the moment in, in Ukraine just reinforces the need uh, to protect um, what has been the most successful uh, peace and reconciliation uh, project in generations and it is a fact that that the, the violence of the troubles and the, and the depravity of it at times and all of it and all of all that went uh, before it drove a wedge between people that it has been 
very, very difficult to bridge. But it's precisely because of those painful uh, aspects of our history that we have to always continue to work to deepen and um, to maintain friendship and cooperation uh, and reconciliation, to put that uh, cycle of mistrust um, into the past and to realise the reciprocal uh, benefits of, of the cultural uh, and personal and trade ties. It's, it is just a, a statement of fact that a strong pluralist Britain uh, is in Ireland's interests and, and, and vice versa and nothing um, will change that. Thanks to the Good Friday Agreement, Irish people here have been able um, to step forward even more, and we would encourage them to keep doing that and not to be uh, afraid to lead uh, in British-Irish relationships at the very many cultural and, and, and social and business and sectoral levels where, where they provide a very natural um, nexus. We live in the shadow and the shelter of each other. President Michael D. Higgins acknowledged during his historic uh, state visit and his address here in 2014. Confident uh, in the relationship that we have as, as equals and with mutual interest, we can embrace the very best versions of each other. The Irish and Britain are doing that every day. Many are moving on from, uh, I suppose, the traditional binaries of the past. Many are embracing the or both part of the Good Friday Agreement and not feeling that they have to decide uh, between be, being British and Irish uh, if they don't wish. To. The tensions uh, of the last five years, uh, as, as the member for Rochdale said, are probably a topic for another day, and indeed we do talk about them probably every other um, day of the year, so I'm happy um, to, to, to park them for today. But uh, though our relationship has been turbulent in the longer past and in the recent past, it can and should be mutually beneficial and warm uh, and reconciled. So thank you to the Irish people in Britain and the British people uh, in Britain and in Ireland who make that so, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Steve. Oh, no.